And welcome back to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state in the servile society. I'm your host, Shane, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia, the self liberated paradise, uh, pasnia.com. Uh, today we jump back into this ongoing health liberation, self liberation series. Uh, this episode titled "A Vanu Guide to Liberate Yourself from Big Pharma." Uh, this originally released uh, as a submission for the Road to Autonomy magazine, and uh, then I believe I submitted it to uh, Agoras Nexus uh, a little while back too. And uh, now, as promised for a long while, uh, here's the podcast edition. But first, please do go check out Liberty Under Attack Publications. Uh, we are a liberty-focused book and audiobook publisher with a special emphasis on solutions to increase personal freedom, uh, as well as an uh, anarchist and agorist fiction. Uh, and if you're an author looking for a like-minded publisher, we'd love to help you share your story. Just visit libertyunderattack.com for all of that, and make sure to check out our discounted bundles. Uh, we'll also be putting out more privacy and crypto anarchy tools. Uh, here in the very near future. Uh, I know I've been teasing the Freedom Boxes. Uh, in due time, my friends. Uh, in due time. Uh, I should probably reach out to Jamin Bakonica uh, again and uh, see what's going on. See how, see how that's going. And uh, we also need to get him back on the podcast. Uh, you'll be hearing from him uh, here in the very near future. I'll be putting out a series of podcasts um, in, re in relation to the Freedom Box. So you can, uh, and, well, you can uh, look forward to that. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get on to episode number 106 of the podcast. So, uh, in August of 2018, I began a health journey that has led me to places I would have never expected. At that time, I set a personal goal to reverse my type 1 diabetes. I had, nowhere, I had no idea where to begin, just that it had to be possible. Well, the low-carb carnivore diet did reduce my A1C, a uh, measurement of blood glucose control, quite significantly, it wasn't going to reverse the condition. Uh, the search continued. Uh, I read hundreds of papers on structure and function of the pancreas and the endocrine system. I read about the prospects of using embryonic food factors, uh, for example, the stem cells and enzymes found within raw dairy, beef pancreas, etc., to regenerate the alpha, uh, beta, islet cells uh, in the pancreas. I also went to great lengths, uh, eliminating toxic influences, uh, and there are a lot. And uh, my current area of investigation, traditional Chinese uh, Ayurvedic medicine. Uh, the former, traditional Chinese medicine, uh, I guess uh, henceforth known as TCM, uh, is the only methodology I've come across with actual success in reversing the so-called disease. And uh, with how beautiful, understandable, and holistic the overall approach is, uh, whether TCM or Ayurveda, uh, it's no surprise. Uh, since many folks are currently looking for solutions in the area of health, and also considering the rampant growing coercion of big pharma, uh, I figured it'd be uh, figured I'd put together a small guide of things I've learned uh, over the past, uh, you know, however many uh, months or whatever. Um, yada yada. It's not medical advice. Just approach this area with the same logic, rationality, and creativity as you would self liberation, and uh, you'll do great. So number one, all disease begins in the leaky gut. Now, Hippocrates knew this 2,500 years ago, but it seems Western medicine, like modern, modern Western medicine, is catching up. Uh, whether we're talking about autoimmune conditions like type 1 diabetes, metabolic disorders like insulin resistance, intestinal diseases such as irritable bowel syndrome, uh, cancers, and even, ne even neuroinflammatory diseases uh, like depression, schizophrenia, etc., these can all be traced to the gut. Alzheimer's disease, which is becoming ever, uh, ever more prevalent today, is even being called type 3 diabetes. Uh, and just as a, uh, an additional note here, um, heavy metals like aluminum are also implicated in Alzheimer's. Um, there's, as with, <laughs> with uh, whether we're talking about Alzheimer's or so-called type 1 diabetes or, or, or whatever, um, there's usually about a dozen different things that could cause it. So um, that's worth, uh, <laughs> worth acknowledging. But uh, back to it. Thankfully, a lot of research is being done into the gut microbiome and the role of antibiotic-induced gut, di gut dysbiosis. Uh, just as in nature, if you disrupt the natural bacteria in the soil by, say, synthetic fertilizers, you'll likely cause a chain reaction of imbalance within the natural ecosystem. Similarly, in your body, if your gut bacteria becomes imbalanced by pharmaceutical toxins or a subsistence diet, the wrong types can proliferate, uh, like intestinal candidus. Uh, which can be the origin of uh, further imbalances in the body. Um, so potential solutions. Uh, restore balance in the gut and support the body in its reparative process. Uh, consider ozone therapy, ozonated oil. I've taken a few doses of it myself, but still too early to report back. Well, I guess it's not too early to report back now. I've almost finished the, uh, the, the, the container. And uh, the, the first couple times you take it, you can definitely feel the, the, the hormetic response, um, which is just a, a very minor... Um, I guess, uh, reaction, 
um, that the body has. Um, but uh, yeah, within a few doses, it's claimed to re- claim to get rid of intestinal candidus. Um, so I've taken a number of doses of it. I mean, I can't. Uh, the the first couple times, you can definitely feel it. You can definitely feel. Um, you definitely feel the body's reaction. After that, obviously, it, it kind of uh, it's not as it's not as potent. But um, regardless, I, I mean, I, I I think it's helped a little bit. Um, I think it's helped a little bit. I don't have any concrete markers for it, but um, I would definitely recommend. I mean, I, just, I can't make any recommendations, right? But uh, you know, might as well. Uh, you know, it's one one bottle. I think costs like forty five bucks, forty five fifty bucks. Um, it's a it's a cheap uh, it's a cheap first step. Um, and if like uh, if if you're going down this route and you're gonna you know, try to restore balance in your gut, you've got to get, um, you got to get that like gut test. You've got to get, uh, uh, some of these gut tests done and, uh, they're like 400 plus dollars. So I figured $50, you know, initially is a good first step. Um, a good way to, you know, get your foot in the door without having to drop, uh, you know, hundreds of dollars on something. And if it's, uh, you know, claim to work and, and, and this guy, the, I, I heard the guy on the podcast too, who, who, uh, who makes, who makes this stuff. And, uh, it's the same kind of mindset that I have. Um, anything I would ever, like before I would ever, ever let anyone try anything I made. Um, I would have done extensive testing on it myself first. Um, so like, that's the kind of mindset that I, that I appreciate. So anyway, that's, uh, the ozonated oil, the, uh, and I guess the addendum here in the podcast version. Um, next I've heard great things about activated charcoal, um, but I'm still waiting on mine to arrive. Not true. I actually got mine in since I, uh, since I wrote this. And uh, I've, tr- I've taken it a couple times. I've used it once for um, I-, I had an upset stomach one day, and uh, I took a couple, couple, couple of them, and it, it went away pretty. Good. It went away, but I- it, it might have gone away anyway. But um, I don't know. It's uh, another good, another good thing to have on hand for for something like that, and and also just uh, <clears throat> I don't know. It's uh, I guess it, it kind of goes along with the ozonated oil pretty well. But uh, anyway, look into a uh, digestive enzyme supplement too. Um, I use uh, I used to use a desiccated beef pancreas uh, pancreas one um, helps to ensure you're getting most of your out of your food as possible. Um, so I uh, I probably did it was probably four or five months straight of uh, of a pancreas supplement, and uh, I I uh, I mean it's it, it seemed seemed it definitely seemed to help. Um, I uh, just haven't reordered it in a month or so. Haven't uh, really felt a need to. If I feel a need to, I will uh, definitely reorder. But um, yeah, I mean, I I eat a lot of <laughs> I eat, I eat a lot of meat and organs though. So um, I still uh, it's it's not like I'm not getting any of that stuff. Um, anyway, uh, and the last so little last uh, potential solution here: consider altering your way of eating. Um, it's generic, but most would benefit from this too. Um, I'm not going to recommend uh, you know the diet the diet stuff is uh, it's. Um, if you look into t- to traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, like diets, for people who are proficient in that, all of this diet shit is just so so da- so goddamn annoying, um, because you're supposed to eat with the seasons. Um, nature makes things available to you when you need them. Like that's that's kind of uh, yeah, um, you know, eat, eating according according to nature, um, which definitely gives you some insight into why people are so unhealthy today, um, with the constant uh, with the constant. Um, unnatural, very, very unnatural amount of carbohydrates, um, in the diet. A, uh, yeah, very, very unnatural amount of access hundred percent of the time. Um, when, you know, if you, if you think about it in nature, like fruits and vegetables and things like that and berries, um, they, they, they come out, you know, they, the time for harvest is, you know, once or maybe twice a year, right? Um, uh, or maybe maybe a couple more times, but regardless, you you get what I'm saying. Like it's it's not it's not 12 months around. Like you're not gonna be I'm not gonna be pulling berries off of off of off of bushes out here, um, here in February when it's like negative. You know the wind chill is negative, right? Like it's just not gonna happen. <clears throat> so, um, just uh, something something to to keep in mind, and I'll I'll kind of end the diatribe there. But uh, yeah. As I kind of conclude this uh this first bullet point uh, or this first item, if you're looking for a silver bullet solution, I'm sorry, it's not that easy. It's uh, definitely, definitely not, definitely not. Um, number two, eliminate the ingestion of toxins. Uh, this one probably seems basic, but considering how toxic civilization is and how much nonsense we're constantly exposed to, it's worth mentioning. Uh, to make a fine point, it's the pesticides, related chemicals, pharmaceuticals, harmful radiation, heavy metals, home care, personal care products, which are oftentimes endocrine disruptors, if not just outright poisons, uh, the tap water, chlorine, etc. What people don't understand is that the lungs, skin, kidneys, liver, etc. are primarily bodily detoxification pathways. In fact, the lungs tend to be the most often used. 
This is one reason why, especially considering the unreliability and ease of manipulation uh, via PCR amplification cycles of the testing method, I've always had a hard time taking this COVID nonsense seriously. Uh, for more information, check out my interview with the now late uh, David Crow, the infectious of the Infectious Myth podcast. Um, and I think I mentioned, yeah, I mentioned vitamin D down here, but um, I'll just mention here as far as this, um, it's in the, it's it's anyone with a fucking brain could have predicted this. Um, it's that's just it's not compl it's not complicated stuff, but um, yeah, I mean back when we were talk back when I talked to David Crow in March of last year, I think it was. Um, yeah, I mean yeah, this was. This has been this has been commonly known. Like this has been known the entire time. It's probably it's it's probably been known since the 2003 SARS one too. Although I don't know if they're using the PCR test for that. But regardless, like this, it's just it's um, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But uh, yeah. Anyway, eliminate the ingestion of toxins. Um, yeah, eliminate the ingestion of toxins. Uh, number three, fix nutrient and vitamin deficiencies. Uh, as a moving away from the uh, from the reductionist, hyper-objectivist uh, nature of Western allopathic medicine, this one I will probably reduce in importance at some point. Uh, after all, if you're growing and raising your own high-quality organic food in accordance with nature, this problem should fix itself. Whether it's a deficiency of vitamin D, precious minerals like zinc and copper, or even a cholesterol-saturated fat-deficient diet, this great paper is worth reading. If your body doesn't have what it needs to maintain, build, and restore, you're going to have problems. Uh, it's no surprise that they're finding a majority of people experiencing these symptoms of COVID are also being found to have extremely low levels of vitamin D. Um, so, yeah, who would have thought? And uh, the, play the best sources of vitamin D are the sun and, uh, you know, obviously animal products. And what are people fear-mongered fear away from? Um, both of those things. So, anyway, regardless, medical solutions, um, supplements for magnesium, iodine, copper, and zinc. Um, and, uh, fat soluble vitamins, uh, D3 and K2 tend to be the lowest for most. Um, and then, uh, an asterisk here, uh, where you get your supplements from and what form they're in is important. Like, don't go to Dollar General and get your goddamn supplements. Don't do that. Um, don't treat your body like a fucking dumpster. Um, you know, yeah, yeah get, get, get good quality supplements. And a lot of these, like, especially iodine and stuff, like it's, it doesn't cost anything. Um, so I personally recommend and use Avatar products, which is Sophia Smallstrom, a previous guest of this podcast, and, uh, Alpha Vedic products. I use her iodine, her nascent iodine, uh, as well as, uh, a magnesium, um, a magnesium cream, um, that doubles as deodorant. Um, it's, uh, yeah, all, uh, really good stuff. And Alpha Vedic pro as, as far as Alpha Vedic products, products go, um, I've been, uh, drinking a lot of their teas. Um, they've got, uh, like it's called Jangu, uh, Jangulon, I guess is, is one variety of it. And they also have a, uh, like a black tea with, uh, ashwagandha and reishi, like mushroom blend. It's really, really good. But, uh, you know, obviously raw butter in it, raw butter in it and, uh, raw honey. And, uh, then I also got, uh, I just received, uh, one of their, one of the, one of the Alpha Vedic, uh, Fulvic mineral supplements. Um, so I've been doing that. I've been using that the past week or so. And uh, a lot of this stuff is just kind of, tr I'm trying it initially because um, like the, the mushrooms, um, a lot of the stuff I can start growing here at Pasnia. And uh, I do definitely plan on doing that. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, number four, recognize the importance of breathing, yoga, and meditation in achieving physical health and well-being. Uh, when dining with fellow Pasnians this past Thanksgiving, I made the offhand comment that I first, <laughs> I first learned how to properly breathe when I was 28. Two weeks ago, actually. I've, I've always been a stressed and worried person my entire life, and I never really had good coping mechanisms. Uh, learning how to breathe properly and utilizing some meditative techniques, I can avoid the physical manifestations, uh, which are the release of stress hormones, increased blood glucose in the bloodstream uh, entirely, and deal with the emotions. Uh, and again, emo emotions are just energy in motion uh, in a calm and collected manner. Um, now, I mentioned the silver, sil silver bullet solution above. Um, well, if there is one... Uh, it's breathing. As Dr. Berlando titled, titled an important presentation on the subject, uh, breathing is a strategy. Check it out. Um, in terms of yoga, it seems there are a million different styles of each, some calming, some stimulating, some focusing on stretching, some breathing, um, etc. And, uh, and I guess in regards to this one, I'll mention that uh, for, for Chinese medicine um, in Ayurveda, Depending upon what imbalances you have, that determines what type of yoga you'll do. Um, there's, uh, yeah, there's there's yin and yang yoga. There's different varieties. So um, I don't know enough about it to <laughs> inform you on any of it. But um, just, I mean, it, it's it's all it's all out there and it's all readily readily available. Um, as I say, beyond that, I'm an amateur, but it's not hard work. 
Just do it. And lastly, number five, when in doubt, get out of the way and let the body do its job. Uh, anytime you go into a pharma doctor's office, they're going to look for something to treat, and oftentimes they can find it. And uh, 99% of the time, the treatment provided interferes with some other bodily process, requiring another, medic another medication, and so on. And as humans, we often tend to want to try and do something, interfere, even if it's best to leave it alone. It's really important to keep in mind how miraculous the human body is. If you cut your hand, you can watch it create new cells and repair it to perfection. All day, every day, your body is running millions of processes and enzymatic reactions at any given time and responding to endless internal and external stimuli. And if you're like me and you shouldn't be alive considering, uh, when considering all the vaccines, the mostly self-induced diabetes, I think, uh, being unconscious for three days after a grand mal seizure, and uh, all the other damage you've done to your body in short order, at some point, you just have to have a little faith. Um, and I uh, forgot that I opened this up all. This is a very, very good... Um, for the folks on the podcast feed, if you go to the uh, Vanu pod, if you go to uh, the Vanu LBRY or Odyssey account or BitChute, um, you can uh, find the video for this. But um, this is a very, very good paper. All disease begins in the leaky gut, uh, the role of zonulin-mediated gut permeability, and the pathogenesis of some chronic inflammatory diseases. Uh, and that sounds like a mouthful, but in essence, it's just saying that leaky gut, undigested food flowing into the, buds, into the bloodstream, causes an autoimmune reaction I mean, that's basically what it's what it's saying um and then vaccines do that directly they just they just avoid the, the gut entirely um it sounds wonderful right <laughs> so yeah that's that's essentially what it comes down to um it's essentially what it comes down to and it's so effing basic when you think about it and then when you when you toss in toss in um, the chronic pervasive use of antibiotics uh, throughout the nineties. I was, I, that was me. Like I was on the antibiotics all the damn time. And now when you go into your doctor's office, well, I hope you don't go into doctor's offices, but now if you go into one, if you happen to find yourself in one, there's typically warnings about antibiotic over prescription. So, um, it's a problem. It's a major problem. And, um, yeah, um, I don't know, leaky gut and antibiotics. And then the vaccines uh, definitely don't help. Um, definitely don't help. So anyway, let me just uh, see if there's anything else, um, on this, uh, on this post related episodes. Yeah. If you want to, if you want more information, obviously uh, check out our uh, health liberation, self liberation series, uh, 92, dot com forward slash 92, the bioelectric body with Sophia small storm, uh, dot com forward slash 101 venturing out East, um, which is, uh, which, which is a solo update episode. Um, on uh, health liberation, self liberation, just a couple to to get to to get you going if you're looking for more. Um, I think that uh, about wraps up uh, that article, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I, I I really tried to. I've spent. Uh, I know I've talked about it. Uh, I know I've talked about it, but I've spent a lot of time. I've spent a lot of time in over the past couple of years reading reading papers and reading books and watching videos and podcasts and, and all of these things. I've spent a lot of, a lot of time. And, um, honestly, like as, as far as condensing down, um, down to, I guess the, the, the most common root causes, um, it's uh, it really comes down to that. And, and I guess I'll also just harken back to my interview with Dr. John Apsley on, on regenerative, you know, medicine, just the, the fact that getting out of civilization, um, is, uh, is really, really important. Um, getting out of that unnatural synthetic um, cycle, um, you know, the the nine to five, the un, yeah that unnatural cycle, and back into um, into accordance with the nature, and uh, um, and I guess uh, giving your body a chance to restore and regenerate, um, rather than just this this nonsense hustle bustle all the time. Um, it's not a uh, yeah, it's not a uh, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, I'll I'll, I'll quit rambling there. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want uh, uh, for the full show notes, go to vonniepodcast.com forward slash 106. I'll, uh, I'll leave it there. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Vonniepodcast.com. And uh, always remember, Vonnie was yours for the making. Is it possible to create pockets of freedom where personal autonomy is respected? In the novella, Hashtag Agora, Daniel LaRusso finds out the answer firsthand. After discovering Bitcoin, he becomes immersed in the cypherpunk underground. Encryption ghost pads, temporary autonomous zones, and much more. He learns the benefits of freedom, of these tools for self-liberation, and how truly free individuals could conduct their affairs outside of the servile society. Based on real individuals in modern-day Berlin, Germany, 
Hashtag Agora gives you a practical representation of how freedom pioneers can carve out pockets of freedom in an otherwise enslaved world. Get your paperback copy today by visiting tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. And for more titles like this, please search for Liberty Under Attack publications on Amazon.